Today is a beautiful and wonderful day. It's a set apart day. It's a little rainy, but that's all right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat 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 Shalom. Shabbat 
Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Welcome to the Altar of Truth. Worship and praise. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to think about this week, what happened and nothing. I want you to meditate everything on him. For he's here for one purpose, is to clean that slate. Is to get you going on this beautiful and wonderful seventh day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful for brothers to dwell together? Now, today I want you to really concentrate on your worship. I want you to really pay attention to how God moves in people's hearts.
when the music fades and all has slipped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth this is your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song itself it's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Yeshua I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. King of endless words, no one could express just how you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within, though the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I can sing of your love forever. 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 I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Yeshua. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made of it. But it's all about you. It's all about it's all about you, it's all about you, Yeshua. It's all about you, it's all about you, Yeshua. Hallelujah, 
You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold. You are the risen key, seated in majesty. You are the risen key. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. You are the risen Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. so good how good is God he brought us all the way here I want you to all just think about what or how far he's brought you you know, it's been a rough time, but you're still here. And God still has mercy and grace upon all of us. You might think that you're running through the worst things in your life, but you don't even know. You haven't even begun to know what suffering is. Algo está cayendo aquí. Es tan fuerte sobre mí. Mis manos levantaré. Y su gloria tocaré. Algo está cayendo aquí. Es tan fuerte sobre mí. Mis manos levantaré y su gloria tocaré está cayendo su gloria sobre mí 
sanando heridas, levantando el callido, su gloria está aquí. Está cayendo su gloria sobre mí, sanando heridas, levantando el callido, su gloria está aquí. Su gloria está aquí. Algo está cayendo aquí. Está fuerte sobre mí. Mis manos levantaré. Y su gloria tocaré. Está cayendo. Gloria sobre mí, sanando heridas, levantando al caído. Su gloria está aquí, está cayendo. Su gloria sobre mí, sanando heridas. Levantando al caído, su gloria está aquí. Su gloria está aquí. Su gloria está aquí. Su gloria está aquí. Está aquí. Aleluya. Aleluya, 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 aleluya. Isn't God good? La gloria del Señor. God is so good to all of us. We're grateful and humble to be in the presence of the Almighty. Knowing that time is coming near. And knowing that he loves us so much that he has kept us. He has given his mercy and grace upon us even though we don't deserve it. Even though we don't deserve it. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God is good. Amen? How many say amen? Amen? All right. Glory, glory, glory to God. Can I please have an usher up here, please? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen, amen. <laughs> well, it's raining. 
right? Amen. That's right. It's rainy, but you're here. And that's the beauty of it, you see? You know, last night, you can be seated. Last night, I was just thinking about this whole rain, right? For some reason, I start thinking about stuff. I don't know why. It's just, just me. And I was thinking about all week it was sunny and it was so beautiful and it was even got hot there. And then all of a sudden on Shabbat, here comes the rain. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm talking to my father, Abba, and I'm saying, Lord, why? You know, why is this rain falling on this day? And I don't know, but the Spirit told me it's a test. What do you mean? It's a test. It's a test. That's all I came up with, right? I thought about a lot of things, and I just said, okay, well, it's a test. Beautiful, wonderful, whatever you do, you know, it's, it's all you, Lord. And then this morning, I'm talking to my grandson, and we're coming to the sanctuary here, and we start talking up the rain, and he turns to me and says, Pops, it's a test. And I, I, didn't, I didn't have no conversation with him, you know. But that was just confirmation to tell me that sometimes people tend to miss things because of weather. Well, no wonder the Bible says you better pray that it's not in a winter or it's on a, you know, on a day where, you know, it's not comfortable because where are you going to be? That's all I got to say for this morning. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Welcome to the altar of truth. Welcome to the altar of truth. I'm Pastor Alex, and I'm so humbled and delighted, and I'm just grateful to be in the presence of God, to know that he has never forgotten us. He has never forsaken us. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, because God is with us. Amen. I'd like to say hello to our East Coast AOT, our West Coast AOT, people in, uh, in Costa Rica, people in Mexico, people that are now in Texas, all these people that are spreading the word and spreading the word that God is coming soon and that we are supposed to be in the truth because it's all about the truth. Amen? So before we start, what do we do, blessed ones? That's right. Where are my shofar players? Where are they at? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. So far, players. Okay. On the count of three, we're going to sound a shofar. We're going to let this community know. We're going to let people know that we will not be silenced. That we're going to move forward. Whatever happens to us, we're going to still keep on this road. Yeah, we could fall and you know, let's dust ourselves off and let's continue to roll. Amen? Because there's bigger glory and a bigger promise ahead of us. On the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen? All right. How many of you are ready to get into the word of God? The living word of God. So am I. I am excited to get into the word this morning because like I always say, Yahweh always has something to say. The spirit of God moves and he gives us utterance. So that we can speak the word of God. Amen. So before we start, let us come into one accord. Let us all come into one accord and let us come together as a unit, as a, a body. Let us pray so that the spirit of God, the Ruach HaKadosh can discern. And each and every one of you, what he wants to tell you today. Okay. Because that's what we're here. You know, this, it's a personal relationship. A personal relationship that God has given us individually. So when you pray, pray that the Spirit of God will speak to you directly 
on what he wants to share this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Yahweh, our Elohim, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, I thank you, Lord, for this beautiful and wonderful day. I thank you for this Shabbat that you have set aside for us to do one thing, is to rest in your shalom. Father God, I pray that all distractions will be just silenced, that you may be able to speak, Father God, that your words are coming out, Father God, that will honor and glorify you. Father God, I pray that the Spirit will impart to each and every one that's listening to my voice this morning. Impart to them, Father God, what your message is. Father God, we all need it. We all need it, Father God, for today is the day of God. It's the day of the Lord. It's his day. So let us all worship and praise and honor him, Father God, and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We pray this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen and amen. All right, I want to pray for our children because our children are so important to us. And again, um, there are things that are happening right now in this world that are involving children, and it's it's not a pretty thing, you know, because the enemy is getting more and more violent. He's getting more to where he knows that he's going, he's defeated already. So he's going to want to take as many as he can. So we have to be very, very careful, and we always have to be careful on our children because they are the prime targets right now. So let us pray for our children. Yahweh, our Elohim, we pray for our children. I pray that they will be instructed in love always and taught the truth, Father God. I pray for their mothers and fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, whoever is going to have an impact in their life. I pray that you will fill them with the truth so they can actually help them, Father God, as they grow up. May you bless them and their families and allow them to flourish and thrive. I pray you fill their homes with peace, love, mercy, grace, health, protection, but most of all, forgiveness, Father God. I pray this in the name of all names, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, amen and amen. All right. Let's get into our word, okay? And I'm going to tell you, every week, prepare. Prepare for fire. Because the closer we get, the closer we get, the more Yahweh, the more he's going to reveal, the more he's going to reveal things to us as we read his word. Before I start, repeat after me, please, if you will. Yahweh, open my eyes. So that I will see the wonders from your Torah and Yeshua's mighty name. Today's title is, Do Not Touch What is Unclean. Do Not Touch What is Unclean. Okay? So, first of all, the Torah portion for this week, it's it's found in Leviticus chapter 1, I mean chapter 12, verse 1. The word is tazria, which means bear seed, okay, bear seed. Now, if we look at this, let's read the first one, okay. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1, our Torah portion says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived and born a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days. As in the days of her customary impurity, she shall be unclean, and on the eighth day... The flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. She shall then continue in the blood of her purification. Thirty-three days she shall not touch any hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of 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 her purification are fulfilled. Now, let's stop right there. I can go into this teaching about the unclean, the woman, and all these things, but I'm not going to. But if you want to know about this, Go into our studies that is titled, Purification Comes from the Blood. I did a full study on this last year, on this very specific thing about a woman conceiving and all these kind of things, okay? So if you want to know about that, go into our our library, our YouTube library, and in there you'll find Purification Comes from the Blood if you want to know more about this. But this is not where Yeshua took me. This is not where the Spirit of God took me. Let me start by saying this very clearly, okay? Ladies, you don't become fully impure each month nor during childbirth. This is a result of your trust in Christ, and I want to explain it why. You remain holy and clean, okay? I want you to really get that because I want you to know something. Let me start by saying it's a spiritual mystery, not a mechanical process, okay? In this teaching, I want to reiterate 
in the strongest possible terms that unclean is not a state that a believer in Yeshua faces many, any longer. And I'm going to mention, I'm going to say this because if you were to look at this and, and you were to read it literally, that means that a woman every month is unclean. Therefore, if God comes during that time, she can't go to heaven. She can't go to the kingdom. Or if she just has birthed a child and Yeshua decides to come and blows the trumpet, she stays back. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. But I'm going to get deeper in this, okay? So I want you to really understand what the Spirit of God put in my heart. Now, if we believe that Yeshua's atoning blood is at work upon us in every moment, then we have to rethink this very carefully, okay? In our temporary world of time and space, Yeshua's sacrifice on that tree is said to be rightfully so once and for all. That was it. This was a one-time event. In terms of the Torah and the Old Testament and the sacrificial system, one would say that this single sacrificial offering of his own bodily blood satisfied all matters where a ritual sacrifice was needed for atonement. Stay with me. But in the spiritual world where there is no time and there's no space, it is though his sacrifice is ongoing. It's not another, then another, then another, then another. It's the same one continues, endless, it's eternal. Now, sin, at least in the sense of bad behavior or disobedience, the breaking of the Levitical, Levitical rules and regulations, obviously, is not at play here, okay? We see that we can't equate the commission of a sin with becoming unclean in every case. But unclean is associated with sin. Let me explain. In the same way as some non-believers, okay, in the same way as some non-believers, wonderful people, caring, loving, but unsaved people, can seem to be living a perfect life. Some of them hold even, they hold up Mother Teresa. They hold up Gandhi. These are very good people. In fact, if they do not commit any sinful behavior, if they do not commit any sinful behavior, their very nature is sinful due to their relationship that we all had with Adam and Eve. Christians call this our sinful nature. Now, and just as the bad behavior, the commission of identifiable transgressions against the Father must be atoned for, so also our sinful natures have to be atoned for. That is why it is said that the innocent babies, when they're born, who haven't had an opportunity to misbehave, to be disobedient against God, they are still kind of a sinful state because they carry in their nature the result of the fall of our common earthly ancestors, Adam and Eve. They brought sin in. It is in this sense where sin and unclean meet. Our sin nature will eventually produce uncleanliness. There is nothing we can do about it. Nothing except to rely on Yeshua's atonement and cleansing work on our behalf. That is the only way out. That is our escape. Do you remember when I said last week that Paul said we come short of the glory of God because of sin, he was pointing to who we are more and less of what we do. And who we are is indeed the same for all humans in God's eyes. We are all equally guilty of being born of sinful nature. There is no exceptions. There is no exceptions. We were born into this world, into this sinful world. The Torah sacrificial system which we had been studying all this time, typically called for the burnt offering, was designed to atone not for the acts of sinful behavior, even disobedience, but rather for the Israelites' sinful and therefore unclean natures. Okay? And if you recall, we have been studying about the Ola and the Mincha sacrifices. In fact, these sacrifices had nothing to do with committing trespasses against Yahweh or Elohim. 
It wasn't until we got into the grain offerings, the peace offerings, the sin offerings, the guilt offering, all these classes of sacrifices that the Torah began to deal with, the sins against Yahweh, our Elohim, and the impurity that the sin produces. In this Torah portion, chapter 12, it's the Levitical, the Levitical Ola sacrifice that is required of a new mother. You look at it. And that is a sacrifice that has to do with her sinful nature. And the hot, tot sacrifice has to do with her purification. That is, the price is paid for her to move from an unclean state back to a clean state, from impure back to pure. You see, Yeshua paid the price from our moving from an unclean to clean state, like in the hatat sacrifice, and from moving from a clean holy state, like in the Ola sacrifice. Now, I'm going to get real deep here, okay? So I really want you to pay attention this morning. When you think about staying pure, is the result of avoiding contact or union with unclean. Impure is the result of coming into contact with the unclean. According to the biblical scriptures, when you read this, it tells you this, right? As a Ruach HaKadosh moved in me as I was studying this, it never ceases to amaze me how God wows me in such this process. Because the things that you think you know and that we think we know, boom, man, Yeshua comes, the Spirit comes and shows you something different and takes you on this journey. I'm going to share with you what the Holy Spirit revealed to me as I was studying this. Now, remember, we're talking about unclean, okay? We're talking about unclean, so I want you really to pay attention. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Go to verse 17. The Bible says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, Yahweh. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Now, this verse is instructing believers not to have anything in common with an unbeliever. Whew, wait a minute, where'd you get that from? What do I say this? Because this verse we just read comes after this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Come on, put it together. And then that comes out, do not touch anything that's unclean. Now, come out from among them, it says. Who is he referring to when he says them? Who are the unclean? The Bible speaks very clearly of unclean spirits. It talks about unclean spirits. Go to Luke chapter 11, verse 24. And Luke chapter 11, verse 24, the Bible says when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places Seeking rest and finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. The enemy also knows God's numbers and things like that. Remember who he was. Remember where he first started. He started with him in the kingdom. The, many, the, the enemy knows that God's perfect numbers are seven. He knows that. Remember how Satan has been around since the beginning. It took the priests seven days of cleansing before taking receiving their promotion. A woman is unclean for seven days, so on and so forth, as we talked about last week. Seven, we're here on this seventh day of Shabbat, and the next day should be your new beginning. But the Bible speaks of many unclean spirits. There is a spirit that I believe is the top general, if you will. There is a spirit out there that I believe has all the stars 
four-star, five-star general. And that unclean spirit, that demon, is the spirit of pride. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove to you why I know this. The, the big commander of them all is that spirit of pride. And this spirit alone has damaged and even killed many. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says this. These six things, this, these six things Yahweh the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. First one on the list, a proud look, pride. Second one, a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. But the first one is pride, el orgullo. Pride causes so much damage that one sometimes doesn't even know how damaging their own pride is killing their partner. The first one is pride. Pride causes so much damage. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. The Bible says... Now I call upon you, brothers, watch out for those who cause divisions and stumbling contrary to the teaching which you learned and turn away from them. For such ones do not serve our master Yeshua Messiah, but their own stomach. And by smooth words and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the innocent. Your obedience indeed is reported to all. Therefore, I rejoice concerning you, but I wish you to be wise indeed as to the good and simple toward the evil. And the Elohim of peace shall crush Satan under your feet shortly. The favor of your master Yeshua Messiah be with you. Amen. You know who are the ones, and I want you to really understand this, that cause more division than anyone else in the Christian movement? Pastors, priests, bishops, church leaders. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what I have to say today. As I was studying this, and the heaviness in my heart was with me, I was thinking of these unclean spirits, and I couldn't really pinpoint what it really was. Then I thought of this, how the enemy always knows when to attack. Do you ever wonder why when you're having such a wonderful time, right away something comes in and tears it apart? Do you ever wonder why when you're trying to make the best of your life, something comes in and boom, hits you right on the side? Have you ever thought that when you think that your marriage or anything you're doing is going well and all of a sudden one little thing falls and think about this. Because when you stray from the truth, you are vulnerable, very vulnerable, and the enemy sees that. Because let me tell you, every time you're walking around, there's an enemy looking at you. Because the Bible says that we have angels that guard us. Yeah, but guess who else takes their little angels to look at you? The enemy. Also, when you don't spend time in the word, here come the wolves and sheep's clothing, and they start deceiving you. Because it takes somebody with an eloquent speech, a beautiful verb, that will come and tell you certain things and make just like, remember, people remember the Pied Piper, remember that story? You know, the Pied Piper, everybody followed him and played the flute. That's what these evil spirits do. The wolves in sheep clothing. You see, when you don't know your own due diligence, when you don't do your own due diligence and study the word, anything that comes from the pulpit sounds amazing, but is it truth? I mean, guilty as charged. I was one of those people that sat there and listened to the person up here. And every time, amen, glory, hallelujah. And I left and I was satisfied with what came off the pulpit. But I never did go and check to see if this person was telling me the truth. The 
This is why I encourage all of you that when Pastor Alex is talking, you go check yourself. Go check your, your, your scriptures and all that. I don't mind. I don't mind. When you see and you don't do what you're supposed to do, you can be deceived like that. This is why when I read Acts, I'm so like, wow, with the Bereans. These bold Bereans who would always, always, always double check what they heard from the pulpit. They would always double check what they heard from the pulpit. The Bereans were these people that were here of beautiful teaching, but they would say, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Okay, let's go home. Let's check it out, see if it's true. It's true. Acts chapter 17, verse 10. Acts chapter 17, verse 10, the Bible says, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by the night to Berea. Okay? Now, we're talking about Apostle Paul and Silas. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Okay? Now, these Jews, talking about the Bereans, were more noble than those in the Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Couldn't, you couldn't put the wool over their eyes. They were, and they, I mean, we're talking about, you know who this guy's were? Apostle Paul, man, he was like, he was the guy that you heard and said, oh, hey, he's coming. You know who are the wolves in sheep's clothing? You know who they really are? They're the ones who are against God's word. They are the ones who do not believe Yeshua's teachings. They are the ones, these are the people, what are they called really? If you think about these people, the, the, the wolves in sheep's clothing, who are these people? Who are they really? Well, let me tell you who they really are. Go with me with 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and go to verse 18. The Bible says this. Children, and I, and I use the amplified, okay? It is the last hour, the end of this age. We're coming to the end. And just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him, even now many Antichrists, false teachers, have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last hour. Now, all of, all of us have been taught that this Antichrist is coming in from the east. He's going to be wearing a turban. He's going to be this. He's going to be that. He's going to be that. Well, let me tell you, there's already little Antichrist hanging out. According to the scriptures, they call them false teachers. Because anti means opposed. And Christ is Christos. What does the scripture say about the last days? You know, we're going to be in the, what, the days of Noah. What are the last, uh, what does it say about false teachers in the last days? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. And go to verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. The Bible says this, For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction. Stop right there. In the Amplified, it says that challenges them with God's truth. Okay? For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction. That's going to challenge them with the truth of God. And there, we're, we're in that time right now. But wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen. To satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold. And will turn their ears away from the truth. And will wander off into myths and man-made fictions. And will accept the unacceptable. Blessed ones, welcome to the last age and welcome to this era. And where people want to hear and want to feel good. I want to go to this church because it's, got, it's dark. It's got a lot of pretty lights. It's got loud music. And I want to feel good. Well, I talked last night. I gave a teaching on worship. The true meaning of worship. I want you to understand that false teachers, Antichrist, will have deceived many. They have and they will deceive many. And God will hold them false teachers accountable. I want you to hear what I'm going to say. Okay. All these false teachers, all these people that are out there gathering these sheep and teaching them false things that are not coming from the scriptures are going to be held accountable. They're going to, first of all, be held accountable here on earth. 
And then their destruction will come during judgment. Go to Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 6. Ezekiel 34 verse 6, the Bible says this. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh, as I live, says the Lord God. Surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouths. They may no longer be food for them. Now, as a pastor, you better believe it. This hit me right in the heart. You see, what this tells me is that God is going to remove people from certain denominations, certain teachings, and he's going to bring them to the truth. Come on. You see, many pastors, priests, evangelists are too busy building audiences and not building armors for God, armies for God. They're building an audience, but they're not building the army for God. And according to the prophet Ezekiel, they will be dealt with here on earth. Instead of equipping the flock to look out, they are teaching them to look up to the platforms and the altars. And they're teaching them to see all the pretty screens and the lights and the performances on church stages. You see, blessed ones, all this stems from the general spirit of pride. And as I said in the beginning, pride is an unclean spirit. Are you with me? Yahweh is against these leaders and pastors who are feeding themselves and not his sheep. And Yah is going to deliver them from those places. Now, I want to say something that I didn't want to say, but I have to say it. Because when the Spirit of God moves in me and burns my heart, I have to say it. Because I am not here to tickle no one's ears and people are listening to me. You can turn off your TV if you don't like what you're, you're hearing. When I think about why we are here today, we all, the majority of all of us, belong to a certain church, a certain denomination of some kind or sort. I have to go back to this scripture and just read that God will remove us from those shepherds where his sheep were not being fed the truth and those leaders were feeding themselves. But I'm not only talking financially, feeding their pride. By teaching their own philosophies, by teaching their own opinions, by teaching their own agendas. When the Bible talks about the truth, this is what he wants his sheep to be fed, the truth. Because he wants his flock to be free, to worship and praise him. He wants his flock to be in his pasture. And I think about this all the time because right now, as you see, yeah, God is beginning the process of sifting. There is a lot of shaking in this world. God's hand is coming down and is selecting and choosing all of his people because time is coming near. We are getting ready to cross the Jordan and only those that worship him in spirit and truth are going to cross. Just like the time when Joshua and Caleb and their own were the only, they were the only ones that were allowed in their families. And Yahweh warns these shepherds and tells them he's against them. 34.9 again, Ezekiel 34.9, he says, Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand. I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep. And the shepherds shall feed themselves no more. 
And I will deliver my flock from their mouths, and they may no longer be food for them. It's very adamant, very, very specific. But the prophet Ezekiel is telling you, we're done with this. Pride is a very dangerous, and let me tell you right now, you must allow God to cleanse you and to strip you off this dangerous, unclean spirit. You got to let it go. You got to let the spirit of pride go. We just finished celebrating the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And I said this was a new beginning for us to start a life without leaven, without sin, right? See, what happens is that the leaven comes out of the mouth of these leaders, and the frequency heart of a leader pervades the entire congregation. It won't even know it because the physical realm and the spiritual realm work in tandem. And when a leader, a pastor, tends to claim he is a spiritual leader, it goes out from him and it will, it will infect everyone on a spiritual level, which then manifests itself in the physical level, and pride becomes what is growing in the movement today. Because let me tell you, if you look at a lot of Christians that are walking in this world, there is no fruit. They speak. They talk, they act like the world. Where is the new beginning? Where is the new creature in Christ? See, the major problem is that God is trying to put the spirit and truth in his people. What did he say? He's going to remove the stony heart and put a heart of flesh? And he's going to write the commandments on you? Where is the commandments in your heart right now? In your pocket? In your wallet? Come on. Because you know what? Whatever you're doing that's against God, it's going to bite you. Don't think you're going to get away with it. There are people right now that says, ooh, man, I've, I committed that 35, 40 years ago. I'm going to get away with it. Don't, don't, don't even say that. Because the Bible says that every stone will, every stone will be <coughs> turned over. Things are going to get revealed. People are gathering and it's pride and it's demonic, unholy unclean spirit and everyone that feeds from pride needs deliverance. You know, as I speak right now, many people, I'm going to tell you right now because it's happened to me. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look at my phone and bing, 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 bing. They're going to try to put me down. They're going to tell me that I'm teaching the wrong thing. They say, I'm not right. I'm speaking on my own behalf. That's not biblical. But I tell you why I get these texts and why people come against us. Because there isn't a single demonic, unclean spirit that we will let itself be known. They're always hiding. It hides in the false teachings. It hides in the wolves and sheep's clothing. It hides in these kind of people that stir up the crowd. But let me tell you, they cannot hide it from God. As I said last night, you can do what you can smile, you can praise, you can do whatever. But whatever's coming out of your heart, that's what God's looking at. What is in your heart? Let me tell you, they can't hide from God. It will expose them. He will expose them. Luke chapter 8, verse 17. The Bible says, for nothing is secret that will not be revealed. Nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. This is why it says, man, start speaking truth. This is why the Bible says if you have sin, talk to the brethren. Talk to your people. So that the prideful demon will be exposed and that is what is happening right now. Now think about what's happening other than our country going down the tubes. There are people that are being exposed. There are leaders that are being exposed. There are all these things that are coming out of these trafficking things and all these things that were going on. And we were actually listening to some of their music and all this stuff. They're starting to get exposed. Why is that? Because there's not going to be anything that you have an excuse when you stand in front of that judgment seat that is going to say, well, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, you did. I gave you everything. I showed you. I told you who he was. I told you who she was. Everything can be hidden because it's going to come out. 
that prideful demon is going to come out. And for all of you people that are still holding on to that Superman ego cape, you better let it go. It's pride. It's ego. It's all about me, myself, and I. That's not the image of Christ. And it's for sure not the mind of the heart of Messiah. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, patience, faithfulness, self-control, restoration, the heart of the humility, meekness, going the extra mile, doing whatever it takes. Father, give me as I forgive. Father, forgive me as I forgive those who trespass against me. That's the mind of Messiah. That's the Christ-like. We all want to shema and learn the ironic blessing, you know. People love that blessing. Sure, it's a beautiful, it's a powerful blessing. But it's more ironic and doesn't work for most people because pride in their hearts is so thick, it doesn't even reach the ceilings when they're saying it. Who am I talking to this morning? I want to tell you right now, God will not tolerate prideful people any longer. And his wrath is upon those who are still basking in it. Because we're already seeing a lot of big, monstrous, prideful people coming down. God is starting to bring them down. The time of crossing the Jordan is now. And he's selecting those that are putting on the kingdom armor and representing him. It's not about your individual ministry. It's not about the churches or your own little kingdoms. Those are not going to cross the Jordan that are all going to be promoted to leadership. The kingdom-minded people are the ones that he's going to bring and he's going to cross them because they are the royal priesthood. And another thing I want to say this morning, stop thinking about what people will say about you. Stop saying, stop thinking about what they're going to think about you. Stop putting other people's opinions before the truth. Stop putting other people's opinions before God the Almighty who said, I forgive you, my child. Because why? Because you want to be wanted? Because you want to be part of the group? Stop making excuses about what you truly believe because it might offend your family. It might offend your Catholic grandfather. I just said that. I'm not, I don't got nothing against Catholics, trust me. Your friends, your co-workers. Oh, I don't want to say that. Oh, I know they don't believe. Oh, I, I, oh no. Okay, they made all these chicharrones, but I'm going to just go to the, I'm going to have the jello and say, oh, wait a minute, the jello too, No. You know, people try to do that because they want to satisfy. But, you know, when are you going to start standing up for the Almighty? When are you going to start saying, no, that's not what God told us to eat? Here in the Bible it says it. When are we going to start standing for our God that took us out of that trash can and brought us into this light? I mean, we're always ready to thank people on this earth that do us some good, blesses us with something, gives us something, but we're never ready to bless God and tell him how grateful we are. We hide. We hide from Yeshua because you're working in an environment where 99% of them are non-believing Torah and you're the only one and you want to hide that? Well, let me tell you, Mark 8, 38 says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So go ahead and be ashamed of him if that's what you're going to select. But let me tell you, get away from me. I never knew you. I'm talking to all of us, including myself. Shepherds and leaders grow up and start crucifying your flesh. Who am I speaking to? If there's a pastor listening to me, man, get out of that rut. Get away from those lies. 
Stop trying to be right all the time by your own philosophies and agendas. Go into the scriptures and learn from him. Because he gave us the perfect instruction. There was only two out of the 12 tribal leaders in ancient Israel that made it across. Joshua and Caleb. They sent 12 spies and only two came out with a good report. A non-fearing report because everybody else were scared. Now, 10 of the 12 top leaders in the kingdom of God chose to walk. Those 10 chose to walk in the fear. Now, one might say, well, that, not everyone comes down, it doesn't come down to pride. What about fear? Well, you take fear and strip it down to its least common denominator, it's still pride. And ego because fear is pride and ego because fear brings God down below you and elevates you up in your carnal mind. And you build up your emotions and physical flesh and eyesight and you only see what you want to see to the demise of what the living spirit. God inside of you says and what you should do. Now let me tell you something. This is called idolatry, my friend. It's pride in its full function. The earthly fear is cloaked is a cloaked seed of pride covered in an emotion. Fear doesn't believe God at his word, and that is pride. Unclean, impure, nasty spirit. I mean, how many of you know prideful people right now? You know? And you think about them as they come in and you go, oh, man, here he comes. Oh, there they come. What are they going to talk to me about today? Hmm? Their brand new Cadillac they just bought? Or how many people are following them? You know, this is what we go through. This is pride. Impure, nasty. It's a spirit. This is why the Bible says this, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I mean, I'm talking about people that want to be, I mean, we're, I'm an educated man. Okay. But just like Paul, that doesn't mean nothing to me. What is more valuable to me is when I got to know, when I started to really realize who Yeshua was. And who his father was and what the commandments were and all these kind of things. That's what put me in like, whoa. But man, you have heard many people on the pulpit talk about their doctorates, talk about their masters, talk about this, talk about that. But they don't talk about the power of God. Because they're, everything they do, they lean on their own understanding. They want to take their understanding and put it across everything else. You cannot beat God. You're not smarter than him. Your pride in thinking you're, you, that you're smarter than God, it's only going to mess you up. Do you all remember when we read that on the eighth day a child gets circumcised? Remember we read that? It's in the Bible. Now, do you all remember the story of Joshua? What happened to him when he went into Gilgal? When he got there, circumcision was happening. And then you start thinking about this. What is circumcision? It's the circumcision of the flesh. What is this flesh over the heart? It is the pride. Pride is what prevents the heart from being in sync with God's heart. Pride is always putting yourself first. That's why the circumcision that Paul talks about in the Bible is the circumcision of the heart. Romans chapter 2, verse 26. It says in the Bible, scriptures, so then if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirement, I want you to really listen to this, okay? Pay attention to the scripture. If those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who, even though you have the written code and circumcision, are a lawbreaker. 
A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outwardly and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart, by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. So when you read the scripture, you got to think. Because for everything, the Jews had their, you know, circumcision. But God was telling him, yeah, you might be circumcised, but you don't follow my law. So guess what? This Gentile is not circumcised. But yet he follows me and he follows the law. Well, guess who's going to make it and who's not? When Yeshua said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and your strength. And then he said, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What was he really telling us? He tells us up front that this is the struggle. The struggle that human beings have today, Christians today, your struggle is to love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. The problem is you want to love yourself more. Therefore, you're not going to want to love your neighbor, much less anyone else. And this is very interesting because I always talk about this. I always talk about this. Why do I talk about it? Because I experienced it. Because I can't tell you that I read it in a book. My life is this. I did not know how to love until I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. Then I learned how to love. Everything I loved before was superficial. It was worldly stuff. And this is the struggle many have. Because they're always thinking about themselves. And they're thinking about their understanding instead of thinking about what God told us to do. What did Yeshua tell us? What is the, what is the greatest commandment? These right here, man. If you can do this, everything's going to fall into place. He tells you up front, you're struggling with this. God put these two golden commandments and everything of the Torah hangs on these two commandments. Yet there are people out there that claim the front of the book, they claim and read the Torah, they claim to follow the law of God. Don't tell God that you follow his law and live in egotistic, prideful status where everything is about you. And all you have time to do is to criticize someone else in their spiritual walk. How dare you? How dare you speak into someone else's life a criticism? You Pharisee, you hypocrite. I'm not going to apologize for that. If I'm being hard this morning, but enough is enough. We must get back to our first love. Because from the beginning, he told us, you don't fight against flesh and blood, man. We are spiritual. We're in a spiritual battle. And you can see all around us. Many are on that road to destruction and their pride is leading them right into that terror, right into hell. You know, my wife and I were having a conversation today. I'm not going to mention the actual person that was given a, a, you know, his sermon. Very popular, one of the most popular evangelists out there, already passed. And my wife was saying, you know, wh why, why did God allow him to go out there and preach and to thousands of people, but yet he wasn't really telling all the truth. He wasn't preaching Torah. He wasn't talking commandments. He was talking the, the, the other half of the book. I said, sometimes we're not going to know. We're not going to know why these things happen. But one thing I can tell you is that when you think about thousands of people, you have to go to that scripture that says, Many are on this road to destruction, and only a few will find this other road. That's, that's what comes to my mind, you know. Because remember, a lot of people think, oh, man, that, I used to think that way. Oh, yeah, I, I go by. When we first came to Sacramento, my wife and I, you know, in 89, 90, I think it was that, that year, 
we came to Sacramento, and we were trying to find this church, right? And, I mean, we passed by this big old church off of um, a capital Christian. I don't remember what it was. But there was a lot of people there, and we said, man, this has got to be it. It's got to be the church we've got to go to because why? Look at all the people that are there. They've got to be doing something right. But then we ended up in some other church. It was a lot of people, but it wasn't that big, right? And later on, I started to just find out that a lot of people go where all the popular crowds are at. And this is where he tells you, be careful with these wolves in sheep's clothing because they're going to deceive you. And they're going to think this is where you belong. But, then I, but, but the Spirit of God always takes me to that little scripture that says only a few will find the truth. The gate is very narrow. And then I think about Noah and his people. I think about all these things that were happening, Sodom and Gomorrah, all these kind of things. Blessed ones, we need deliverance. We start in utilizing our talents. We have to start and utilize our talents and anointing our gifts for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand. How do we know it's at hand because the shepherds will recognize that we are just sheep. The shepherds have their staffs and they will have the fear of God built into them that God forbid that they will lead a single sheep astray. How many remember that 99 and one leaves? The scripture that talks about it is a very famous song in Spanish. I have heard and I have had conversations with pastors church leaders who say, I tell them, don't you believe in the Torah? Don't you believe in the front of the book? And they tell me the same thing. They say, yes, of course we do. Of course we know the Sabbath. We know that the Old Testament is still there. But claim they cannot make a change because they feel they will lose the majority of their congregation. And they feel that if they do that, that these congregations, these congregants are going to take off and they're going to go into the world. But some of them feel that if I lose them, I will not be able to make my, my house payment or my car payment. I don't know. But let me tell you something. If I'm speaking to somebody right now, let me tell you what's happening right now. If you think that you're going to lose the majority of your congregation because you come into the truth, well, I have news for you right now. They are already lost. You've already lost your congregation because you're handing them over to the enemy one by one. You're giving them to, to the enemy one by one. The purification process is at hand. We are in that moment in all the Torah, especially God's sacrificial systems in Leviticus, we're there now. We need to be purified. We need to be cleansed. We need to be, get rid of all these unclean spirits. During your time here on earth, you must continue to refrain from those unclean spirits. Every day you must pray. You must just battle to make sure that that spirit doesn't crawl on you and you go back into the world. All of these things we talk about only works if you know how to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Because Yeshua told us also, this is how you're going to do it. He wants to be loved. Many people claim they love him but are far from it. And this is what I'm talking about. And it connects with this Torah portion. If you go to 1 John chapter 5. And you go to verse 1. We start in verse 1. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. It says everyone who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah has been born of Elohim. God. And everyone who loves the one. Capital one. Capital O. Bringing forth also loves the one having been born of him. By this we know that we love the children that we we love the children of Elohim. When we love Elohim and guard his commandments. For this is the love of Elohim that we guard his commandments, his commands. And his commands are not heavy. Because everyone having been born of Elohim overcomes the world. And this is the overcoming that has overcome the world, our belief. 
You can't talk a good game and not walk it. Come on. Yeshua did not bring any new commandments for us to follow. He followed the Torah, which was written and obeyed as he was teaching them. He was teaching and he was walking the Torah and he was teaching the Torah. Now, let me tell you, there's a lot of people who think that he came and he brought all these new things. No, he didn't. Yeshua brought the commandments and the covenant, what he did as he brought those commandments, he took these commandments that are written, and he brought the covenant and took it to a higher level. That's what he did. In other words, when I read this, I say that the commandments was brought to a 2.0. Because the Bible says that the covenant that he brought had better promises. Not new ones, just better promises. There were not new laws. It's like a contract, a contract that has better things in it. You're going to rebuild your home? Okay, let's do this. Let's start working on it. Okay, let's do a new contract because I want to add another level. Oh, hey, that's a good idea. How about adding a pool? Oh, that's beautiful. That's a, that's a, let's add to the contract. But the house is still, build, still, still being built. You hear what I'm saying? Yeshua came in and he said what he said. Because he knew that people were going to run and say, oh, look at what he did. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Where, where is he at right now? He's in the Sermon on the Mount. And what does he say? Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. He's telling the people, don't, don't think I came in here to take this away. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. Okay, now if you do your due diligence and look up the word fulfill in the Hebrew, it's pleru. The word is pleru, which actually means to bring it to a higher level. In other words, bring it to the 2.0, if you will. Because if you recall what he was saying in Sermon on the Mount, he says, you have heard it said this way, but let me tell you what I'm telling you how to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, murder... Your brother, okay, blah, blah, but you want to even if you think it now, you've murdered him. Well, that to me is bringing it to a higher level. People say out there that they know Jesus. Oh, I know Jesus. I know Yeshua. Do they? Do they really know him? 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 says, Now, by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Right there, stop. (laughs) Just the the first sentence. Now, by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is un mentiroso. He's a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, what is the word? The truth. What is the truth? His commands, his Torah. Truly love, the love of God is perfected in them, in him. By this we know that we are in him. Who says, he who says he abides in him ought himself also to, also to walk just as he walked. Who is he talking about? Yeshua. How did Yeshua walk? Torah. He walked with it inside of him. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Here, John clearly and plainly states it. In order to love God, we have to keep his commandments. He also mentioned they are the ones we heard from the beginning. They are the ones that we heard in Genesis. They are the ones that we heard in Mount Sinai when he was giving it to them. These are the ones that he's talking about. Then Yeshua confirms this by stating these words that confirm what we need in order to live righteously in this earth. 
John 14, 21, the Bible says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see, in Leviticus, the only way all, all of the sacrificial rituals and staying pure was to love. Love him who instructs you. Love him who keeps you safe. Love him because if you love him, you're going to do exactly what he tells you. See, this world right now is falling apart because people don't know how to love the way he instructed us to love. They love the way the world taught them. They don't know how to love God's way. And that is the biggest problem. Because let me tell you what the world taught us. The world didn't teach us to love. It taught us to lust. Come on. Come on. It didn't teach us to love. It put this little seed of lust in us. You see, Leviticus is the way when he was giving the sacrificial rituals, he was trying to tell us something. The world is falling apart because people don't really know how to love the way he instructed. He starts the commandments by saying, I'm the one. I'm the one who took you out of Egypt. I'm the one who pulled you away from that narcotic. I'm the one that pulled you away from that terrible marriage. I'm the one that, pu- I'm the one that did all this for you. Remember when you were in the trash cans, eating out of the trash can? I'm the one that brought you. I'm the one that put you in the light. He starts by telling us this. And then he right away says, you shall have no other gods before you. Don't serve other gods. He said, I'm a jealous God. He is. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, it says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. And he repays those who hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore, you shall keep the commandment, the statutes, and the judgments which I command you today to observe them. Because let me tell you, people, for people, if, we sh- if we sh- God permits us to be still alive and stuff, you're going to see things going down on, on t- TV, news and stuff that you've never seen before. Do you all remember a few years back when we saw those guys getting beheaded out in the Middle East? People were in shock. It was shocking because right away they took that out of, they took it out of, you know, social media. But a lot of people got to see it. And that's something that has been going on for many years. But that's something that's going to continue. And that's something that you're going to see because the lion, the roaring lion is out there killing and destroying. And the people who are not behind the covenant of God are not protected. They're not, according to the scripture. He keeps his covenant and mercy for a thousand generations for those who love him. He keeps it with those who love him and keep his commandments. Now, think about it the opposite. If he's telling you he keeps his covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments, what does he do for those that don't love him and don't keep his commandments? Blessed ones, you're called. You're chosen for this journey. And the truth has set you free. You need to stay obedient to his word. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what you're going through. God is the answer. You don't think he has an answer for you? You don't think he has that response you're looking for? You don't think that he can save you and your children and your relatives? You don't think that? If you don't, if you don't think that, then you don't think really big of God. Because God says, with me, anything is possible. With man, nothing is possible. You can think, he can make things happen. 
You are called and you're chosen for a purpose. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. I'm going to say that one more time. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, set apart, so be set apart, holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Holy. You are set apart. And God set you apart because he's set apart. He's holy. And then chapter, Acts chapter 2 verse 17 says, And it shall be in the last day, says Elohim, that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. But let me tell you, this will only happen to those who are obedient in God's commandments. Because it only works when the formula is connected. Because if you're not following And you're not doing what he says. The spirit can fall on you, but what are you going to do with it? You won't know what to do with it. Your sons and daughters can't prophesy. There will be no visions for young men. What kind of dreams will the old men have? Because believers, Christians, have dropped their guard and allowed the unclean spirits to take them over. That's what you're seeing today. Did you know that an unclean spirit is a lawless spirit? That's a lawless spirit. They do not believe in the truth of God, but their, their time is coming to an end. Let me tell you something. Their time is coming to an end. Now, I want you to know one thing, that there is a reason why the word is out there that we do not have hours anymore. We have minutes for the coming of the Messiah. And I was listening to this pastor or this preacher or Torah teacher. And the first thing he said is, the enemy has been out here for 6,000 plus years. And you start thinking about the calculations that we talked about last week. And we say, whoa. So the seven is coming. And, and it's very near. Right? We're coming to an end. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 says, this is, listen to what this says. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Yeshua will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Do you all remember what I said about the Deuteronomy 13 test? He's going to allow things to happen because he wants to know, are you really with me? Do you really believe what I told you? Do you believe really what I instructed you? This is why he wrote this. So when you delight in weak, weak, wickedness, you will not want to listen to me, especially, or anyone that's teaching Torah, or anyone who's teaching the truth. You don't want to listen to us because you're so ingrained in your way of how you want to think. You don't want to allow the truth to come in because it's going to mess up your agenda. It's going to mess up where you think you're going. And that's the danger. Because as we read earlier, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, 
and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their, own, their ears tickled with something pleasing. And they will accumulate for themselves many, many, many teachers, one after another chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold and will turn their ears away from the truth. I don't want to hear that. And will wander off in myths and man, man-made fictions. And they will accept the unacceptable. You know that in, even in this church right here, we had a few people that came in. And I remember them telling one of my ushers, man, I can't listen to this guy. He don't got nothing good to say. They're talking about me. You know? Oh, no, no. He, he don't speak like those other guys. You know? I want to feel good when I come out of church. <laughs> really? Well, you're in the wrong place. Because you know what? I don't want to be in front of my father and he, t- and he tell me, why didn't you feed my, my sheep the truth? There's no way. I don't want to f- feed you myths and man-made fictions and tell you, okay, you're fine. No, go ahead. No, you're not fine. You got to get rid of that pride. You got to get rid of that, that emotional thing that's keeping you tied down. They want emotional feel-good sermons. You know, I'll give you a couple once in a while, you know. Feel good that I'm telling you the truth. You got to feel good because of that. But the more you accept this, the more the unclean spirit takes charge. If you don't accept the truth and you start just wandering off, that spirit comes on you heavy, 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 heavy until it takes you over. And soon you're walking and you don't even know that that spirit is controlling you because it's so common. I'm getting ready to land, okay? Fasten your seatbelts. Here you go. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Go to verse 7. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7, it says, The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Stop right there. He's not telling you to love like the world. He's telling you to love like the way the Father taught you. Okay? So don't get this mixed up. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. If you're going to do something for somebody, don't start grumbling because they're there. Or whatever you do. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Some of you have gifts that are in your back pocket. You put them away in your closet and you have yet to to use them for other people. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Whatever comes out of your mouth, make sure it's wholesome. Make sure it's anointed. Make sure it has the word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength of God provides. So that in all things God may be praised through Yeshua, our Messiah. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So who am I speaking to this morning? Who needs to get rid of that pride? Who is still walking around thinking they know it all? Well, you've got to be careful because God wants to reign in his temple. The Ruach HaKadosh wants it cleansed so that he can reign in it. Blessed ones. These unclean spirits are taking over. I'm sorry to say that, but they are. Just look at this country, just this country. And look at all the abominations that this country has allowed in. The abominations to Christ, to God. Never in our wildest dreams in the 50s and 60s and 70s would we ever be thinking that they would be saying these kind of things in Capitol Hill. We were a country of prayer, a country of belief, 
we would never allow things like this to happen. But yet, the enemy has infiltrated. Why? Because he has attacked the leaders, and the leaders have put on the whole armor of pride. Just look at what's going on right now in our schools that the government is allowing. Demon worship. The gay movement. The woke people. And all the rest of the unclean spiritual attacks are coming in slowly but surely. But my question is why? Why are they coming in? Who is allowing them to come in? The children of God? The believers? Where are we at? Why are we praying for our children? Why are we praying for our schools? Why are we praying for our government? You know why? Because we're too busy thinking about our selfish wants and needs. And we're not praying for others. We got to get off that. Because God knows what you need and what you want. But he wants you to make sure that you pray for that person. Because if you read the Ten Commandments carefully, when he starts with the first four, it's about loving him. And the second, the last six are about loving your neighbor, the person next to you. But if you can do that, he says, everything's covered. So people, I want you to this morning to think about where you're at. Where are you at in this road that you're on, we're all on? Are you still carrying that pride with you? Are you still trying to make yourself known? Are you wanting to be a star? You know, somebody said something last night and I was laughing, man, because I never thought about it this way. He was talking about stars, right, the stars in heaven and all that, right, and how, you know, um, Lucifer, the morning star, you know, and all that, right? And everybody wants to be a star, right? And the only thing that this earth can give us or this place is they put a star in the walk in Hollywood, right? And he said, they put the star in and everybody's like, oh, wow, right? But people are walking on it. Dogs are defecating on it. People are spitting on it, buds and all this stuff. That's what the world offers you when you want to be a star. The only star that we should want to be is a star for him. That we're going to be able to go up there and just be in his kingdom. And it made me think like, wow, because I've been to those concerts where there's 60,000 people and one person walks out on the stage and everybody goes crazy. A star. But yet, we don't give that to our father. We give it to everybody else except him. The one that really deserves it. We must be cleansed. And his blood has already done it for us. He's already shed the blood. We have to start standing up for what we believe in. Just like everybody else that goes out there with their signs and says they believe this and this and that. The people that are fighting for their for Hasatan, the people that are fighting for all these abortions and all these things, where are the Christians? Where are the people standing up for these things? For God, for the truth. Where are they? Where are they? Do not touch what is unclean. Do not touch what is unclean. Like I said before, Paul wrote it perfectly. What does a believer have to do with an unbeliever? What does righteousness have to do with unrighteousness? You have to be very careful of who you're with, who you're hanging out with, what they're feeding you. Because let me tell you, before you know it, you're deceived and you're falling. Amen? Do you all hear me this morning? Do you all get it? Are you sure? So I can repeat it one more time. Huh? Let us all stand. God is so good. He is so good. Let us pray. 
Yahweh, our Elohim, our Father, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us today for one purpose, is to lift your name. I thank you, Father, that you have always, Father, put things in our hearts to think about. You have put your words in our minds and our hearts and our souls. And I pray right now that they will be just moved in our hearts, Father God. I pray that the people that listen to this sermon today will start thinking about that pride that they carry, about that want, about the greed they have. They need to let go of that greed, that pride, because pride brings all that with it. And I pray that they will be able to just say, Father, you're in control. Take me where you want to take me. I pray for the peace and shalom in people's hearts. I pray for those people that are struggling right now. I pray that you will break those chains and that they will be able to walk your walk, Father God. That we will be able to be imitators of you, Yeshua, as you walk this earth. Father God, I pray for the people that are right now suffering and sicknesses and diseases. I pray for blessings over their lives. I pray for the people that are still in between the fence, lukewarm people. I, I just pray right now. Take him out of that, Father. Bring him into the truth. I pray this in the name above all names. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Let me give you all the blessing in Yeshua's mighty name. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, speak to Araon and his son, saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them. Via rekaka Adonai Vishmerecha Yaer Adonai Panav Elicha Vichunicha Yisa Adonai Panav Elicha Semicha Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his face toward you and give you all Shalom. God bless you all.
Yeah. 